we're going to look into HTML forms. You use forms every single day when you are on the web. You use a form when you're searching uh, Google for a web page. You're using forms when you log into your Facebook account. You're using forms when you sign up for a newsletter. You're using forms when you send emails. Everything that you enter input into is a form. And there are many different elements and inputs that you can use when creating forms. So I just have a, a final little form here just to show you what we're gonna build, just to give you a really bare bones example of what a form is. So over here you can see I just have a very just generic form with some information. So I called this profile information and it's contained within this box here with a name input, an email input, a password, where you can write passwords and it hides your characters. Gender, using radio buttons, so you can only choose one or the other, you cannot choose both. Type of computer, I have a laptop, I have a desktop, you can check both, these are called checkboxes, and this is a select button, uh, select menu, where you can choose an option from the select menu, and a text area where you can, you can write multiple lines of text, and then two buttons, the submit button, and the clear button. So if I were to submit, this would submit that info. Currently it goes to nowhere because this is just the HTML front end skeleton form. It doesn't actually submit data to a server. And then there is the clear form. So if I were to fill in some information here, you can clear and that will clear the form. So why don't we go ahead and get started building this. Go ahead and create a new file. I call it forms.html. You know the drill, copy, the basic structure and get that uh, page title changed forms and why don't we just add a level one heading here for fun forms now the first thing you need to do is create a form tag it's just simply that now in order to achieve that this effect here, we need to add what is called a field set and a legend. So a field set is basically the wrapper of the form. It wraps the entire form. And then the legend is at the top of the field set. And it uh, shows up here in the top left corner. And we're going to call this profile info. And so that appears here. You can see in the browser window. Under the legend, we need to add a series of inputs. And so we want to start out by creating an input. And inputs are self-closing tags like images, so you don't need to have a pair. And in order for the input to be valid, we need to set or state a couple attributes. So input should always have a type. And you tell HTML what type of input this is and it is simply just text as you can see here in that drop down there are actually a number of types that you could choose for the input button checkbox color date date time email file image month number password radio range search submit text time url week there's a lot that you can actually do for this attribute but we're just putting plain text and here we have our input up here where you can write information now, if you want to have a placeholder text that just kind of gives you a little bit of a guide within there, that is an HTML5 attribute called placeholder. And you can put enter your name. And that does not add any text to the input. It's just kind of a ghosted in the background, like a silhouette, just to let you know what you're supposed to do for further usability. Keep in mind that because it's HTML5, it doesn't work on all browsers. But if you're using more modern browsers, it will work. Okay, but before that, we wanted to have uh, a label to, to tell the user what this input is all about. If you didn't have the placeholder, or if you're using an older browser, you wouldn't know what to enter there, as you could see. So you need to have a label, and there is a label tag in HTML. And you could put just some uh, text in this label. It is an inline element, as you will see. So it will be in line with the input, which is also an inline element. Okay, next up we have another label, and we're going to put your email. Now what we're going to do just to separate these on new lines, because we're not doing CSS yet, we're going to do a break tag, and that will break that onto a new line. 
input. We want the type to be email. That will tell the browser this is an email going to be in this form. Placeholder, you can add one if you want. You're at email.com. Just to give them an idea, let's add another break tag and another label. And this will be gender. Now I want to separate that with another break tag just to give it more space. Gender, and I'm going to put another break tag after this label because I'm going to have a couple of radio buttons here and they don't look so good if, they're, if the label is sitting in line with the elements there. Okay, let's go ahead and just give it a bit of space here and add some radio buttons. So you do input again, and the type needs to be radio. And so, so you can see here, we have a radio button. And the thing with radio buttons is you need to add an extra element, sorry, attribute in the input to tell the browser uh, what group of inputs it is a part of. And that will make sense in a second here. So I'm just going to put some text right after here. I'm just going to say female. And let's put another input. And this type will be radio as well. And this will be male. Now I'm going to put a break tag after the female here so it's on a second line. Now let me show you something. Like I said, radio buttons are supposed to work in the way that only one is able to be clicked, correct? Why is it that I can click both? Why can I not toggle these radio buttons? It's because HTML, the browser, does not know that these have anything to do with each other. They just see them as standalone inputs. They don't know that they have a connection. You need to tell the browser these are related. These are what you toggle between. So that means you just need to give it a name. And that name could be whatever um, lowercase text you want to put just to describe what this radio button is. So we can say gender. And now I can only toggle between the two. I cannot choose both. And you could do the same if there, if you were to add more radio buttons, as long as they had the name, the same name, you would only be able to choose one. Okay, now we're gonna add another couple of break tags here. And we're gonna do the checkboxes. And uh, we're gonna add a label here. And that is type of computer. And another break tag after that to give us some space. We have an input and the type will be checkbox. Checkbox, you do not have to ha have a name in order to tell the browser, hey, these are related. Uh, it's more so for when you submit form data, it's good practice to have a name so that the server knows what information you're trying to send. But we don't need to worry about that right now. This is just the skeleton. I have a laptop. I'm going to put a break tag there, another input, and that type will be checkbox. I have a desktop. There we go. That's good. Now we're going to add a, another set of elements here, and that would be the select menu. So let's add a couple break tags here. Whoops. And that's going to be a label age and now we're going to add a select tag and we're, we can in the select tag add more tags we can add children tags uh, that will let us choose the options within the select menu so they are option is the tag and this is where you put the options so I'm going to say 0 to 20 another option tag 20 to 40 option, 40 to 60 option, 60 plus. And there we go. If I save that uh, over here, you can see I can choose those options. Now, basically there is one more element left, so we're going to add uh, in this example, we're going to add a couple break tags here, and under that, we're going to have another label. And in there, we're going to say 
message. And the element we're going to add is the text area. Text area looks like this and it gives you a text box where you can add text just like so. Now, if you wanted to make this look a little better, you can add a break tag after that. And you can also adjust the size here with this little toggle on the bottom right. But if you wanted to, by default, have this text box be bigger, you can add a couple attributes here. And that is rows. And you can state the number of rows. So let's say like 10. Uh, maybe that didn't change us to 40. And calls. 20. Did that work? And it did. It looks like the rows worked. So let's change that to uh, 10. And the calls, let's do something like 80. So if you wanted to change that, you could do that right in here. And that is fine. That's valid HTML. However, you would probably want to do something like this in CSS to make it even cleaner and to totally remove any styling uh, from from the HTML. So there we go. Next up, we do have a couple more inputs and that is the, uh, the buttons. So a couple break tags. We're going to have another input here. The type will be submit and that will have submit by default as the text. Now, if you want to change that text, you can, all you need to do is just change, uh, add an attribute here called value and you can type whatever you want in here. Save my info. And now I'm going to add another input right below this and it will be the reset. There we go. And uh, that will say reset by default and you can obviously change the value there to clear that info. Save uh, and let's just check it out and see how that works. So we got uh, some info here. You could choose some of these. And then you could save the info. Looks like here in Chrome, it actually, because it knows this is an email input, it actually does some validation for you. So that should be a valid email. There we go. It's submitted the form. Nowhere. Uh, let's do another thing and clear that info. There we go. There's actually one more input that I want to add here that I forgot. That is the um, password. So let's say password and we're going to go input type password and that will give us the password field where you cannot see the characters. Pretty cool. There are a lot of different types of form elements. We've only played around with a few here. Uh, these are kind of the main ones that you usually play around with. Text, uh, email, password, radio buttons, checkboxes, and select menu, so on and so forth. But there are a few more that you can play around with. If you are using something like brackets, you can play around with the autocomplete option here. In type, you can actually see like what kinds of inputs there are. So if you could just choose one like, I don't know, color, it'll give you a color picker. And you could choose a color. Like so. Now, uh, we don't have a practical application for that right now, but it's just kind of a cool thing that you can play around with to get the idea of how forms work. So that is HTML forms and uh, see you in the next lecture.